Hi, Mary Daisy. Um, last time we talked, I think it was about signing the papers for DNR and talking about dying going forward. But I have other news to share. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm in the hospital again. So the last time uh, I had been to a doctor and gotten the results that um, from a neurologist that my neurological issues were uh, too much. He felt he was incapable of doing anything further for me and I would have to go to Mayo or Cleveland Clinic. And that just isn't feasible. Um, we don't have the funds for the gas alone. Uh, we're in bankruptcy now. Um, you may remember we bought a farm in 2014 to start a rescue for abused, handicapped, and senior dogs called Petit Treasure Rescue and Sanctuary. And the intent had always been to hold weddings there to fund the shelter, but the county told us we needed a variance after the owners told us we didn't and the neighbors voted it down. So we were scrambling for the last six years to make ends meet. And this week, the well pump broke for the house. And we're talking about a house that has two seniors living in it with 20 hospice dogs and an Airbnb that we run. So needless to say, we needed water to come into the house. And my husband has a, a home warranty. He keeps up with Home Warranty of America, who he called immediately and explained the situation and said it was an emergency. And we have repair or replace and 24 hours later, even though they said they put it in as an emergency, nobody had called or come out. And he called them back and they said they could not find anyone. If he found somebody, they certainly would honor the repair or replace warranty and whatever the bill cost. So the day after he found somebody, that person came out and fixed the well pump and then he faxed all of this information to the home warranty of america company and now they're refusing to pay they're only paying um 821 dollars i believe of a four thousand five hundred sixty dollar bill i i think any body whether you're one of my immune group people or not could understand the stress of that, not to mention, um, so as you see, I'm wearing my eye patch and that is because of my corneal abrasions. Last week I had the right eye covered and I only had the left to see out of. And during the time, for some reason, the left eye looked at words and it looked, they all look like hieroglyphics. And if I look down my clothes and blankets, whatever I was looking at, were moving. Um, and I know I've shared in the past that um, the person who actually diagnosed me with Sjogren's was an eye doctor. I had been going to a rheumatologist and I had already been diagnosed with fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue when I started with this rheumatologist. Went to this rheumatologist for years, had ongoing um, progressing and worsening symptoms. And uh, 
she finally sent me to a pain doctor. And then I started with my hands where I couldn't hold a cup or a pen or anything. And I wanted to go to a hand specialist and he sent me to Rush Hospital in Illinois to have my neck fused where I find out later that the cartilage dissolving in your hands is a Sjogren's side effect. And so now that I'm progressing and becoming worse, I'm falling more. And as a result, my most recent CAT scan shows that my fusion in my neck uh, are coming apart and shifting and things aren't connecting and things are sticking out where they shouldn't which adds to the stress. But I have uh, an interesting story from going to my eye doctor again. Uh, I was, I used to go to Sam's Optical and one time I went and my regular doctor wasn't there. There was another doctor there, uh, I believe Justin and Justin, sent me to Moses Eye Care Clinic. And Dr. Rob Moses, I don't believe he even needed to look in through a machine at my eyes, just meeting and looking at me. The first words he said were, you do realize you have Sjogren's, don't you? And I had never heard of it and said no. And then as my best friend was driving me home from the doctor's appointment, I'm reading everything about Sjogren's and I had every possible symptom, including having broke every tooth in my mouth over the last 10 years. So when I went uh, to my eye doctor this week, and since uh, I went to Dr. Moses' office, Justin's in that practice, and now I see Dr. Nicole Albright who's been an absolute treasure. She's just wonderful. And I explained everything that was going on with the neurological diagnoses and my not being able to go to Cleveland or Mayo. And she said, would I be willing to get a second opinion locally? And I said, why or, you know, what did you have in mind? And there's a neurological Institute uh, of Merrillville, which is down the street from her office. And she got me right in. I saw the doctor yesterday, the first neurologist, and he's from Cleveland, which is why she sent me there. And he took my history and the copies of all the tests I had and immediately set me up for next week to see a doctor of uh, a neurologist that specializes in optical issues and the following month another neurologist there at the same office that deals with uh, stroke and neur neurological issues which I have chronic strokes and of course since it was the eye doctor who has been the only one who's actually diagnosed me or been instrumental in diagnosing me for everything up to now. Um, of course, I, you know, I, I couldn't be happy to go. Um, in the meantime, uh, all of my fellow people out there, you all know when we get stressed, everything flares and we become so much worse. And I think we're all in the same boat where we're in agony with our muscles, with our joints. And I have the added hypermobility where it's kind of pulled my ligaments down the right side and they won't go back. And um, so I'm in agony and when I went to the neurologist yesterday he I asked him if he could do something for the pain I was in and he 
gave me a shot in the trigger point where my most painful issues are. And because the muscle was like granite, he had to force the needle a bit. And yesterday evening, I was in the ER with a collapsed lung and today, and I've been in the hospital ever since with a uh, pneumothorax and don't know when I'm getting out of this one, but just thought I'd keep you up to date and um, remind you to share with your friends, um, check out Mary's support group, Mary's autoimmune support group on Facebook, which now we have meetings at our home and we'll work around your schedule and get a, people to come and share their stories and build a, a local support network for sharing and caring. And um, Mary's autoimmune page um, where I continue my vlog and my um, website for the shelter under Petit Tresor, which is T-R-E-S-O-R-S, rescue.com. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.